Hi everyone, this is a joint work with Nicolas Bonil, David Curjoli, Julie Digne and myself, Nicolas Merdeau. The findings and recommendations presented in this talk mostly come from the paper Code Replicability in Computer Graphics that has been published at the uh, ACM Transaction on Graphics two years ago. If you want to read more on this topic, I recommend you to have a look at this paper. Let's now move on to the main goal of all of this, which is we want to be able to duplicate research results that are presented in published paper. Given a paper, I want to be able to run some code, scripts or binaries that will allow me to produce results that are representative or similar to those shown in the paper. Some of you may wonder why this is important, right? Duplicating research results has several benefits. First, let's consider the fact that, as researchers, our goal is to discover new knowledge and share it for the greater good, to our community and to the public. Here, duplicating research results helps to validate a given implementation and prototype so it then can be used by researchers, companies, and public for the relevant use cases. Secondly, it has a strong impact on the research process itself. It helps to further evaluate and validate approaches that have been already published and compare them to ongoing research. Papers are selected by peer review, and it may happen that bugs bias or undetected limitations strongly affect the performances or the impact of a method. In order to detect such issues, reading a paper is not always enough. It might require us to run and use the published approach with different settings than those used by the authors. Again, duplicating the original results is mandatory to validate that the detected problems does not appear with the settings used by the original authors. Finally, it has been shown in several research communities that the number of citations of a published paper can be significantly increased when the author shares the code or the binaries used for their experiments. This leads me to the concept of replicable, reproducible and repeatable research. These concepts can be used to qualify work in any research field, right? In this talk, we'll focus on the specificities of computer graphics and computer science. I guess that some of you may have already heard about these three terms. In fact, depending on who uses them, they might be def defined differently. For instance, the Association for Computing Machinery and the National Academy of Science use opposite definitions. So in this talk, we will follow the ACM definitions such that repeatable research means that the authors can duplicate them, their own work. We leave this concept for now as it relates more to the research process itself rather than to the research outcomes. So we have these two concepts, which qualify if other researchers can duplicate results using either the original artifacts produced by the authors or their own artifacts. Reproducibility is something difficult to evaluate as it involves both the authors and the other researchers' capabilities. We can say that the paper is reproducible if the author provides all the required implementation details in the paper. The author provides all the required data and other details related to the experimental process. And the other researchers have the technical skills to duplicate the experiments, and they also can reproduce the technical environment for the experiments, both in terms of hardware and software. Imagine, for instance, a small research group willing to replicate the latest large-scale neural network requiring um, a data center for, for processing. It will not be possible 
whatever the skills of this research group. In this presentation, we will rather focus on the replicability, something that can be evaluated and something that you or any researcher can actually work on. So, as you can understand, replicability is mostly about sharing artifacts that can be used by people to duplicate the research results. Of course, the first thing we think about is code, right? In practice, it's more than the code that needs to be considered. There is also data, pre- and post-processing pipelines, if any, software environments, documentation, among others. When you share artifacts like that, you might keep in mind that anyone might want to use them, whatever their background, if they are students or experimental researchers, engineers, and so on. For instance, the documentation is something critical in order to explain to people what need to be installed and what are the steps to follow in order to use the code and the data. <clears throat> Without it, it's very unlikely that people will know what to do, and so your paper will not be replicable, even if you share the code. Note that, in some cases, when the inte intellectual property rules do not allow you to share the code, for instance, when companies are involved, the authors can share pre-compiled binaries. As long as the piece of software can be used properly to duplicate the results, this does not affect the replicability. This may, however, question the evaluation of the contribution and results as there are some hidden parts. But at least we can elaborate future work on the proposed pipeline. I hope that I convince you that replicability is something important. You might also be aware that replicability may have a cost. It takes time to produce all these artifacts, and in some situations, let's say I'm staying only one year for a postdoc in grade team, it might be tempting to skip this and just go on to the next project. In the second part of this talk, we'll focus on the tools and the guidelines that will make this process easier both at the individual and the community scale. So, as you remember, this talk is about replicability in computer graphics. It's interesting to know if our research community is involved and aware of the benefits of having replicable research, and if it exists initiative to favorize and recognize replicability. Let's first have a look at the tools and initiative that favorize replicability in the co at the community scale. We have four main categories. Publications of artifacts alongside the paper, recognition marks, collaborative platforms, and dedicated publication venues. Note that we will discuss the technical and practical solution later in the talk. <coughs> A first option is to publish the auto artifacts with the paper as many authors already do on their website page. Recently, the editor started to add the option to store and distribute code as additional material directly in their library. It improves the accessibility of the code over time. We'll come back to this later. Note that in most cases, this artifact publication is optional and based on the author will. Some editors, such as Nature, since 20. 18 now state in their policy that authors are required to make materials, data, code, and so on available to the readers. In our community, the Journal of Computer Graphics Techniques has the same requirements. Another option is to promote papers by recognizing their replicability. You get a board of experts, researchers, who evaluate and acknowledge the fact that a paper is replicable. So, awards, such as the uh, SGP dataset and software awards, are given by a committee in charge of identifying and selecting awardees. In contrast, the uh, replicability stamp initiative provides a way for the authors to submit their paper and artifacts. The reviewers evaluate if the code replicates the results shown in the paper. Note that this process, replicability stamp, is included in the publication pipeline of some journals for accepted papers. 
It allows to save time and also to add the stamp as a metadata of the paper and to promote this information in the journal. A third option is to publish papers where one of the main contribution is that the proposed system or method is reproducible or is the reproducibility of other works. This might be done in dedicated journals like EPOL, workshops such as RRPR or tracks as a dataset paper at SGP. In some cases, papers providing useful tools or datasets can also be published in traditional venues such as SIGGRAPH. Finally, it's also possible to delegate the evaluation to the community by using collaborative platforms. Paper with Code is a platform that goes beyond computer graphics with massive use in the uh, artificial intelligence and computer vision research fields. Here, anyone can add a paper and uh, a link to its code, even the authors. In some cases, some users add an evaluation of the reproducibility according to their uh, personal experience. In contrast, replicability.graphics is a platform that we published alongside our SIGGRAPH paper and which allows users to submit the evaluation of the reproducibility of T of the paper with a lot of details on the process. Version of the code, difficulty encountered, dependency list, the operating system used for the experiments, and so on. After submission, the evaluation is reviewed by members of the committee and added to the database. A discuss system allows users and authors to comment this evaluation, allowing authors to fix the problem, and users to publish new evaluations superseding the faulty ones. Let's have a quick tour on replicability graphics. When you land on the website, you get access to a description of the project, the team, and guidelines for contributors. When you go to the data web page, you go to the top these two bar plots, which gives an overview of several indicators collected in the reviews. For instance, among the papers with code available, you get the number of replicable or partially replicable papers. We currently have 454 reviews so far that can be accessed by the table below. If you want to know how the indicators evolve depending on, let's say, the topic, you can filter the table and get the numbers. Now, if I want to know more about a paper, I can look for it. Let's say here is the paper page. You got at the top the title, the authors, the venue, and links to uh, the paper, the preprints, the code, and so on. The reviews are below. We have four of them for this paper. Note that these two here are marked as deprecated. Here you got the information about the review, link to the code, and here you can see the comments. Here we got David, who uh, did the review, and he had several issues that prevented him to run the code. He managed to fix some things but still couldn't replicate the result. Interestingly, for this paper, we discussed with the first author about the issue and it fixed it. So now we have the updated reviews about the updated code. And as you can see here, we got a replicability score of five over five. If you want to add your own review, simply click here to access the instructions. As you can see, a review is an entry in a JSON file. So it's very easy actually to add your own review to the system. If you want to add your own review, you just need to add the proof request on our GitHub project. And this pull request, let's have a look at this one. So it contains the JSON entry and it will be reviewed and merged to the system. The website will be then automatically updated. As you have seen in the video, it may happen that researchers share their code, but people fail to use it. 
which means that the author took some time to make the code available, but in the end, their paper is not replicable. This might be caused by several reasons. First, you need to provide the material required for the user to download, set up, and run your code, or binary. On our platform, we collected almost 200 papers with code and binary. For almost 25% of them, we couldn't properly configure our system to run the code. In some cases, it might even happen that the download links were broken and we couldn't even download the code or the binary. In the end, we could replicate the, most of the results found in the papers for only 55% of them. Well, having the paper replicable on one computer is great, but you need a bit more to make it truly replicable. First, you need to add the authorship and licensing information to be sure that authors' contributions are properly acknowledged and that people will be allowed to use the code in any situation. Second, you need to document your code so people can understand it and potentially build upon it. Let's now have a look at the tools and methodologies that can help you to make your paper truly replicable in the long term. Don't see this as a recipe you must follow, but rather as a set of guidelines that needs to be adapted to our to your specific situation. So let's start by the beginning, the download step. The main goal here is to be sure that the code will be available for years. As many other jobs, researcher might move from one lab to another over years, right? Each time you move, you get a space to host your personal web page that will be destroyed when you leave. So don't use this space to host code. This is also true for the web page of your research group. It might last for a longer time, but still, it might be removed one day. Prefer using dedicated platforms, such as GitHub or GitLab, that you can directly refer on your web page. These platforms are also very important as you gain version control, issue tracking, and many other features that are helpful to build a community around your project, if you wish to. But of course, even GitHub may be offline one day. I know it might look a bit unlikely, but who knows, things, things can change over time. In order to be sure that your code will remain available in 50 years or more, you need to consider other tools, such as the Software Heritage Initiative or the GitHub Archive program, which propose a paste layer strategy where code is, is archived at different frequencies with advertised lifespans of 500 years or possibly 10,000 years. OK, so after fetching your artifacts, the user needs to configure their system. First, they need to install the dependencies, which are all the pieces of software or code that are required to compile, to compile or run your code, and so are part of your code base. As shown in our paper, having too many or too, lar too large dependencies often complexify the replicability process. Of course, you don't want to reinvent the wheel, right? It's fine to have dependencies, but try to minimize their number and size. Don't link to OpenCV if you only need something to load an image. Also, identify and advertise the version you use for all your dependencies. Think that their API and their behavior can change over time. This is very critical for rapidly evolving environments such as TensorFlow or proprietary languages such as CUDA. Keep in mind that it might be difficult to install old version of this dependency in 5 or 10 years. So try to stick to usual operating system and install dependencies using packages management services such as pip for instance even in the long term it should be easy to set up a virtual machine to get your code working you can help users by providing containers like a docker for instance embedding all the required environment remember that keeping things simple is always a good option minimize user action rely on automatic configuration and build systems. Also, it's tempting to polish your research prototype and turn it as a library with fancy functionalities. Remember that 
This might be great for the community, but it also takes time. So you need to find the right balance between your research and the software development activities. Prototypes are oft, often enough for replicability. And I guess this is the most important slide of this talk, add documentation. Remember that the first time you got a piece of software and someone asked you to make it run, right? It saves a lot of time to have all the information about the requirements, the dependencies, the build instruction at the same place. If people want to use your code, they often need to know who wrote it, how it changed it over time, and so on. And of course, documenting your code will help people to understand it and maybe extend it, improve it, and build upon it. Now that the setup is ready, the last step is simply to run the code, scripts, or the pre-compiled binaries. Again, keep things simple and minimize user actions. Don't expect users to code, right? If your paper proposes a data-driven approach, provide the data, and if possible, the pre-trained models. Don't ask people to train a network for days or weeks just to replicate your work. It takes, it takes time, but also, if something wrong happens during the learning process, the users will be stuck at this stage. Similarly, provide all the instructions and scripts to prepare the data. Describe how to run and how to use or interpret the output. Here again, as you see, documentation is the key. People need to know how all these steps need to be followed and to replicate the experiment. You can find several examples in the documentation page of any of the open source projects that we have in our community. Okay, well, before finishing this talk, I would like to add a short note on licensing. Providing a license is mandatory to define what can be done with your artifacts. Without any license, nobody else can copy, distribute, or modify your work. Many licenses exist out there. Some of them are very permissive, and others allow to control, to control reusability. In any case, it's very likely that your research group or the university already has an open source policy defining which license to use. So just ask. OK, so we have now reached the end of this presentation. In the first part of this talk, we have seen why it is important to favorize replicable research. It has a strong impact on the author's and the paper's visibility. It accelerates the research process by improving reliability and feedbacks. It facilitates the comparison and provides code base and data sets that can be shared across the community. Remember that students, researchers, companies, and even the general public can benefit from it. Also, remember that releasing code can be a time-consuming task, so try to get good habits. Keep things simple from the start, use tools and library when you need them, control the size and the complexity of your code base, and provide data and pre-trained models. And of course, write documentation so people know what to do. Thank you for your attention and for following this talk. We will now start the Q&A session.